Good morning. Fresh from the showcase here at Swiss Watch Expo, we're talking about some traditional watches that are not round. A lot of times when we think of watches, we think mostly of round watches, but reality, the very first men's wrist watches, which came from the house of Cartier, were never round. They were initially the Santos Dumont from 1904, which was square, and then the one that really changed the world of watchmaking was the tank watch that Louis Cartier invented in 1917. So what's interesting about that watch, and one of my colleagues asked me, why is this watch considered one of the most iconic watches that's ever been made? And it's a great question, and I think it deserves a little bit of attention. The, uh, the watch has been written as being the most iconic watch there is. Uh, you can argue about that. You can put it in the comments, see if you agree. And I think that for a lot of people, when we look at the world of watchmaking, you have kind of the camp of that likes a tool watch, like a Rolex Submariner. Rolex would never argue that their watch is more elegant or more sophisticated than a Cartier, but it's a tool and it does what it's supposed to do. On the other hand, you have the Cartier watches, which are about style and aesthetics and uh, uh, elegant gracefulness that are different from the tool watches you see in steel watches, sport watches from other companies. So the way this thing started, uh, Cartier uh, wanted to pay tribute to the American and French tank forces that kept France free in World War I. The first one that he designed was presented as a thank you gift to General Black Jack Pershing of the American tank forces. And uh, in that year, 1917, there were a whopping six examples that were sold to the public. So it wasn't exactly a gigantic product launch. They ramped them up. I think there were 30 made the next year. So if you found one of those really old 1917, 1918 tank watches, that would be a real find. But the design of the watch, it really was designed after the Renault tanks that made the difference in World War I. If you looked down on a tank, a bird's eye view, what you would see really is something that looks a lot like the tank watch because it would have the sides here would be the treads of the tank, the center would be the part, uh, the compartment where the, uh, the soldiers would be, and then the dial, uh, you'd see the hands would look a lot like the gun turret. So he just translated that into a watch. And what's really interesting about this from a design perspective, all the rage at the time was uh, an art movement called Art Nouveau that was super popular from about 1890 to 1910. And if you think about Art Nouveau, you can Google it and see what it looked like. But one of the most uh, striking examples of Art Nouveau would be, say, the Tiffany and Company stained glass that they did. They used really long lines, lots of organic things, lots of organic colors. There was a lot of superfluous, sensuous kind of art that was done in that time. And what changed it was the Art Deco movement. And Louis Cartier was at the forefront of the Art Deco movement. He was one of the chief designers that ushered in this entirely new mentality that took place in art, architecture, um, machines. I mean, you could see it in anything from household appliances to the Chrysler building, things were sleek and modern. And at the time it wasn't called Art Deco, it was just called modern. But in 1925 there was a big expo in Paris where they, a lot of these modern designers got together and the name Art Deco comes from that. But the, uh, the Cartier tank watch, the fact that it had these very simple side lines, I mean the watch is all about aesthetic straightness. It didn't have all these extra things um, you could kind of compare this to one of those locomotives that was made in the Art Deco period. The design and the art is part of it, but the simplicity and the beauty for beauty's sake is all built into it. But the fact that the ends of the lugs are curved, the edges of the watch are curved, that it's a, a softer, uh, more practical look for day-to-day -day wear than the real sharp edges of the previous watches had been. And so for a lot of people, this watch, not just all watches, but this particular watch is the one that really means modern style and it encompasses all of that exuberance and hope. People believed at the time that mankind could do better, that we could be better people, that we could be a better society, and that technology and uh, society could improve and improve and improve over time. And so when you, when you see this Cartier tank watch, what you're really looking at is something that for over 100 years has never been out of style, has never been out of production, has always been made, and there's really not anything that I can think of off the top of my head that's like that. Um, this watch has been worn by captains of industry, 
by the most influential people, people like the Rothschilds and the Kennedys. Uh, Andy Warhol famously wore his without winding it. He said that you don't wear a tank watch to tell the time. You wear a tank watch because it is the watch to wear. Uh, Princess Diana wore it. Jacqueline Kennedy wore it. Um, people from uh, Cary Grant, uh, Gary Cooper, uh, everyone who was anyone, this was the watch that they wore. Uh, Rudolph Valentino famously wouldn't take his off for the 1926 filming of Son of the Sheik, his last movie. So you have this guy way back in the you know, ancient times in the Middle East, but he's wearing a Cartier tank watch in the movie. It's pretty funny. You'll have to check it out. But because of the heritage of this watch and because of what it means to people when they put it on, Cartier has been able to kind of extrapolate that into an entire uh, uh, mentality that encompasses the DNA of the brand. So it, it carries over to their jewelry, uh, to lots of their watch lines, and they've had a lot of different variations on it over the years. This is the current one, the Tank MC, um, and uh, this one is a, a substantial modern size. It's an in-house manufacturer movement. The movements on Cartier watches 100 years ago were not in-house in general. Cartier had his two really good friends with names that you'll recognize, uh, names like Jager and LeCoult, who helped him out with the mechanical side. He felt that his clients needed the very best of everything, and so why wouldn't he get the very best movements and his very best watch cases? But over the years, the, those movements have become in-house, of course, just like everyone else. They've also been modernized. This is the Tank Francaise, which came out in 1996. It was for the company's 150th year anniversary, and it was the biggest product launch they ever did. It takes the Tank concept a little bit further and takes the kind of chain concept of the treads on a Tank and makes it into the bracelet of the watch. So it's in steel and steel and gold and all gold. We have them all in stock at Swiss Watch Expo, even though they're pretty scarce at Cartier. Um, you'll see we have a great collection at great prices. But we also have some of their other editions. This is the Tank Solo, which is uh, a little bit more of a larger watch as well, more of a modern um, proportion. But we have a lot of other interesting square watches, things that are not the everyday round watch that you see so often. Um, we have the Petek Philippe 24, which is no longer being made in square. We have a nice selection of them. Beautiful watch, one of the classiest ladies' watches ever made. We have a huge selection of the Jeger Le Colt Reverso, which was also designed in the 1920s. He was friends with Louis Cartier, and uh, they would uh, collaborate, I'm sure, on a lot of things. You actually saw a tank basculant from Cartier that was very similar to the uh, Reverso. But we have men's and women's Reversos, very dressy ones, very casual ones. Uh, they're a fascinating watch. Um, we have also in the non-round category, the Patek Philippe uh, Golden Ellipse. This watch came out in 1968. They recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of the watch. But this one's built on the idea that there is the divine proportion, so-called, that was in ancient Greek architecture. It's been in, used in art and all sorts of things. And it's the ratio of height to width here. And so it's not quite round, not quite square, not quite oval. It's really its own shape. And it's an iconic part of the house from Patek Philippe. It's the uh, second oldest uh, series at Patek, second to the Calatrava only. And there have been a lot of interesting uh, variations on it. We typically have watches in stock from this line going back to the 1970s. Um, they used originally only the blue dial, but there have been a lot of variations on it since then. Uh, we also have, and this is an interesting 70s throwback, this is a Piaget Polo that was just an absolutely iconic watch in the 70s and 80s. This was one of those watches that uh, the influencers, the movers and shakers uh, definitely gravitated towards. And it's not real common to find now, um, especially in today's market in this condition. So we have kind of the retro chic cool as well from the 70s and 80s there from Piaget. So I would encourage you to check out the history of the Cartier tank. There was a huge coffee table book written called just the tank watch uh, by Franco Caligni that there's, it's on its third edition now. And it really outlines the fascinating history of the watch. Uh, the first waterproof one came out in the 1930s, which was really forward for a square watch uh, for them to be able to do that. So uh, I would encourage you, it's one of these rabbit holes, you know, you, you can really dive deep in 
uh, say the Omega Speedmaster is not just a chronograph. The uh, Rolex Submariner is not just a dive watch. The Breitling Navitimer is not just a pilot's watch. The Cartier tank is not just a square watch, and you should really look into it if it's something that in interests you. There's plenty of information out there about it. Or if you're more of a casual consumer and just like the look of it, that's probably what 99% of the people who buy it uh, are in that mentality, and there's nothing wrong with that. We've got a great selection at Swiss Watch Expo at the top where it says search our collection. Just type in tank and you'll see what comes up.